Okay, let me see. Hey, uh, for you guys, this is part three of the uh, AP Calculus AB content, integration by parts, uh, lining up with the Calc 2 section of our instruction. Uh, with this problem, this is a part three problem, and we're going to show a method that allows us to take some shortcuts for this integration by parts process. I would strongly recommend that you uh, watch one and two before really saying that, yes, part three is where I'm going to land in the notes for this one, just because... <laughs> The content of parts one, two, and three all together paint a fairly strong picture of what you need to know in order to be successful and give you a place to launch off from in your own practice and in your own work through these types of problems. Instead of right away starting with the, you know, the, the formula, which for reminders, I will put it up here, it is identifying the u and dv functions and then looking for um, the way that you can use the work on the side to identify not just dv, but its antiderivative of v, and then using v and the derivative of u, v du together. That's the whole formula. But instead of using that, what I want to use is something that relies on it, points at it, but it's called um, tabular integration. And so it's a shortcut, so to speak, but it's a shortcut that comes with well-earned processes through the integration by parts sequence. We still need to use Lippet in order to figure out which of these things we're we going to call. Monomial. The four Set up a two column table. integrate no yeah no it's gonna be where we differentiate and the other column is gonna be where we integrate so in the two column problem what really is gonna happen is we're gonna put u in this column and dv in this column and then we're gonna just follow the u column all the way down to zero or all the way until it repeats okay so which is something that we haven't showed maybe that's a part four that I'm you know, bonus features kind of make for you in a second. So that means that u is going to be 3x squared. And then working down with derivatives. So u, we need to know du. Just like we did over here, but instead of like focusing on, you know, fill out the formula, now we're thinking about the structure the formula gives us. This table is built upon seeing this structure happen with, um, you know, those types of antiderivatives where you have to do that by parts process more than one time. Maybe as many as, I don't know, nine for forever. You could technically do it by parts process for forever if the function called for it. It would be a pain in the butt. So here is a shortcut system for that. Derivative of 3x squared, 6x. Derivative of 6x, 6. Derivative of 6, 0. That's when I know I can stop because then you're going to have zeros for, the, for forever. On the other side, our dv is e to the 2x, e to the 2x. And if you watch parts 1 and 2, which you really should, then you'd know that once we identify dv, we have to then, furthermore, go identify the antiderivative of dv. So that means that we need the antiderivative of 2x. I'm relying on previous information to know that it happens to be 1 half, e to the 2x. So this is u, this is v. This is du. If we were to then furthermore go another step down, we would identify this as no longer being u. This is now u, du. This is no longer v, it's dv. So we need to find, it's like that we're doing the next rows down, continue the by parts process. So this is still like work on the side, but it's structured work on the side. If we're gonna then reevaluate what we have, we have VDU and we need to, or I'm sorry, UDV, we need to go with the next layer down. I need the antiderivative of one half, e to the 2x. One fourth, e to the 2x. So now we have our U and our V and we can multiply them and that fills out this process. But we're gonna go one step further because this stops at zero. We should probably at least figure out what's missing in this one, two, three, fourth step of the integration column. So we're gonna uh, go one more, one over eight, e to the two x. If we reset this as our u, this would be 
du. If we reset this as dv, then this would be v. So we're still continuing to see, or I'm still trying to highlight for you in this video, that these pieces, every time we go down a row, those are reassigned back into our integration by parts formula. Well, that's the table. The first setup is the table. Step one, can you properly set up the integration, the, yeah, the tabular integration table? Somewhat redundant, I know. Now, if we do that, then the um, steps in our process, remember, this was our original U, and this was our original DV. So if we're gonna use tabular integration with this biparts structure, the formula says we gotta take U times V. This is V. Not the first row, not in the I column, first row, that's DV, so we need its antiderivative. These two things are gonna be multiplied together. Bring out your paper, ready for your answer, equals, and we're gonna multiply the U and the V, which is not the first row, it's the second row over here because this was DV and became V. So then we have to multiply these two together because that's the biparts formula. So 3x squared times 1 half e to the 2x. Okay, set that aside. Now, um, continuing down the row, we would have done v du. So we would have gone and put those two together. But then we used integration by parts to generate the next row. So in generating the next row, we are going to be using, don't forget there's a minus sign there, minus, and then these two things are going to get multiplied. So 6x one fourth e to the 2x. This is just repeating the antiderivatives, uh, the integration by parts process multiple times. So I need to write one fourth e to the 2x. Okay, so after that row, that's the first time, the first u's and v's are put together. This connecting pair is for what we do when we actually figure out how the integral portion of the biparts resolves itself. So then we're done with that one. Now we gotta go one step further. We still have more to do, right? There's still an X in the DU, so we gotta go down the next row. Six will be multiplied by one eighth, but at this moment, we've done a negative of an integral, and inside that integral is another integration by parts, and that means there's another negative. So now, instead of subtracting, we're gonna subtract a negative, AKA add. So we're gonna add whatever we get in this last row, it's six times one over eight e to the two x. And so that's what I'm trying to show right here, is that we're gonna have six times one over eight e to the two x. And ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing more to mess with because from this point on it's gonna be zero times. So we are done. Does that look you know, nice? Does that look easy? No, I'm gonna slide it up and kind of cover up all that extra work. But that is actually the answer. That is the result of using the tabular method in order to simplify the problem. It will be faster. In fact, we have enough time that if you wanted to, we can watch another video here. I can make another video for you. Let me clean it up. This needs to be cleaned up nicely. They all have an e to the 2x, so I can factor that out. Um, they all have an over 2, over 2, over 2, so I can put this over 2. And then we can do whatever's left. So that'd be 3x squared. Oh, they all have a 3 involved. I'm going to pull the 3 out as well. Right, that's a multiple of three, that's a multiple of three, that's a multiple of three. So I can pull the three out and be left with x squared minus two x over two plus three over eight plus c, that's nicely contained. That reduces, so I guess maybe to actually rewrite it as perfectly as possible, equals three over two e to the two x times x squared minus x plus three over eight plus c. Nicely, nicely and contained. I feel good about that. Um, yes, I feel like I need to make it a part four to this video. This part four might be just some practicing of those elements. So stick around for that. Maybe it's bonus content. Who knows? Thanks for watching this video.